Today I want to talk about fear. I really wanted to talk about this a couple of days ago, but a myriad of activities taking place here kind of got us a little behind. But nonetheless, um, this is a sermon that I feel compelled to talk about because there are so many degrees of fear. There is a healthy fear and there is an unhealthy fear, in fact, almost deadly. Um, a healthy fear would be, of course, something like getting too close to a hot flame, standing too close to a ledge, uh, driving on the wrong side of the road, whatever the case may be, there is that element that prompts you to get on the right side of the road, step away from the ledge, step away from the flame, uh, you don't want to get burned, so on and so forth. But then again, there is this unhealthy, almost lethal fear, and it seems so sublime, so minor, but it, it really is not. It's, it's very deceptive. Another healthy fear, fear of God. Now that, that's a fear that's worth having. And, and it's something that the world is suffering from right now, is, is not having a healthy amount of fear for God. I mean, how do you think that all this bloodshed's taking place all these centuries in the name of God? Really, you know, finding a good way to bring wrath upon this earth. And, and people don't realize that this is an unnatural suffering that doesn't have to take place. And it's happening because people do not fear God. They do not fear His commandment. Love God. Love each other. Do you think that all these atrocities taking place, the ISIS, the division, all these problems in the world taking place right now, do you think that would take place if they had a healthy fear for God? No, probably wouldn't. So of course, He is bringing His wrath upon this earth. And this is what's happening right now. The sooner that people realize it, the better, because the time of judgment will be the time that you do not want to be explained to. Right now is the time to hear and see what answers are before you so that you'll be led to the light and not be part of the problem. As your space agencies already know, the armies of heaven are fast approaching. Yield to me now, and I shall restore peace and prosperity. Refuse, and I will rain fire from the sky. I will continue to shake your land, and I will darken your sun. My wrath is great, but my love, oh, my love is far greater. Obviously, we're not respecting God's commandment to love God and love one another and show it so through His Son in obedience to Him. We're failing. But getting back on topic to how it can become deadly, not to just oneself, but to others. That's just as important here. Learning to recognize when you're suffering from an unnatural amount of fear. Now, if you're suffering from an unnatural amount of fear, usually what happens is you reach a crossroads where you have to make a choice. If you're going to, you know, make the choice to do the right thing, or you're just going to take the road of comfort where there is no restrictions, there's, there's no pushback, there's no obstacles, it's just easy, familiar, and comfortable. Okay, or the road of the challenge. Or, even worse, immobilize and not take either. 
pathway. You just stop and sit and watch what happens instead of make that choice or take that action. So we're right now at that time period where the world is at a crossroad and are running out of time making that choice, not taking action and are taking the familiar, comfortable route over and over and over again. It's just repeated in history and, and we know how it ends. What could fear breed? What harm could it possibly do to anybody? Well, a lot of things. You think that your fear is just something that you silently suffer. No. It can fear division. It can fear undermining authority. It can breed innocent bloodshed. It could be the cause or contributor towards war. And, and you might ask yourself, how is that so? Well, if you had told the truth about something, for example, maybe somebody else's actions would have been different. Maybe their choices would be different. Maybe they would be compelled to do the right thing. Maybe you have the power to enlighten a person, to save a life, if not their own. So yes, Suppressing the truth in fear of ridicule, for example, in fear of what other people think of you, that's a problem. All right, I'm going to try to tell you the story the best way I remember it with Yeshua. Um, about 2,000 years ago, of course, Yeshua rides in as a Galilean and he comes into Jerusalem, okay, fulfilling Hebrew prophecy from the Hebrew Bible. Okay, because he's riding in on a donkey. People are adoring him, the crowd loves him. The next day, he's kicking over tables at the temple, the money ch uh, changers' tables. And, you know, the people still love him because he's sharing his truths, his wisdom, miracles are being witnessed. Killings are being witnessed. And what happens? Leadership is noticing. They're fearful of losing their power, their attention. And of course, you know, these activities taking place in the heart of the temple, where Orthodox Judaism, you know, is revered. Well, obviously the Lord. It is, you know, a progressive and he's always had different ideas. In 2,000 plus years ago, he was always quite ahead of his time and still to this day being true. So the leaders want to hush him up. They, they want to send him away. They want to stop this from progressing. They don't want people to know the truth. They do not want the people to be healed and to be enlightened. Uh, and, and for him to show any more of his light.
Okay. So, what do you think is going to happen later on in the story? All in the name of fear. What do you think that the, the Roman governor did? What do you think that Caiaphas did out of fear? The Messiah was sentenced and crucified because of that fear. How would you like to be responsible for have been part of that? All because you chose not to speak up, not tell the truth, not shout it out to the masses that he's the Messiah, that he's real. All because you were afraid of what other people thought about how they perceived the way you looked, sounded. So what if you know you might stutter a little bit or, or not hold you know comfortable eye contact? You know, at least you're telling the truth. At least you're sharing a message, and be passionate about it because there's nothing to be more passionate about than the truth. It can save a life. It can be the very salvation of someone, if not your, for yourself. That's all that matters in the end. Leaders fear losing control, losing money, losing financial control. There's greed involved in that, of course. Fear of losing money. It's still fear. It's not a healthy fear for what you should be doing. The pathway of God, according to His will. It's an affliction. And the more we empower that fear. The more you're going to see the uprisings of the riots, the wars, the corrupt leaders, nothing is going to stop until you stand for the truth, the blinding light of truth. The leaders of the present day, do they fear ridicule of sharing the truth? I mean, I know some. Okay, we talked to quite a few of them that actually believe this truth about the Messiah, but they fear. They fear what their peers. And the people in their congregation are going to think they don't know how to share the truth without suffering some kind of consequence, loss, ridicule. Okay, so yes, leaders fear losing their place. Okay, more than they fear the truth, the truth that could actually be your salvation, your lifesaver. The masses lifesaver. You could save thousands of people if you just told the truth. More than thousands, actually. Instead, with the aid of your Roman conspirators. You bastardized my teachings. You defiled my name and turned our law into a device to weaken the nations, not for the glorification of God, but for your own despicable lusts. Why would I give the kingdom to you? Why would I reward you for such treachery? I will give the kingdom to those who deserve it. Whether they be Jew or Gentile, it is the quality of their soul that will determine their worthiness, their place in the eternal kingdom. Would you today condone the murder of a rabbi, whose only crime was the teaching of reformed Judaism? I. Was worth thirty pieces of silver to you. Those were my wages for the work I had done, of trying to unite you and give you paradise. 
even if you did not believe that I was the Son of God, you would still have had the blood of an innocent rabbi on your head. Recently I spoke with one of the most esteemed leaders of our people, Rabbi Kudori. I explained to him that I would be arriving in Jerusalem soon after the passing of Ariel Sharon. But more importantly, I explained to him who I am. This great rabbi now knew that Yeshua was his king, his murdered king. Did he tell the world as he was supposed to? No. Now instead the immense fear of being ostracized by his colleagues convinced him to hide the truth allowing it to only be revealed after his death. Think about that. He refused me because of the pressure you've all placed upon him. The pressure to conceal a two thousand year old crime very sad for him. <sighs> How very sad for you all. With your conviction, your passion, and your confidence in this truth, okay, it could do exactly what God's will intended for you. It's not a mistake that you're watching this. It's not a mistake that this message is right here speaking to you. It might make you feel a little uncomfortable, maybe even fearful, but it is time to let go of that fear because you've got to love the Lord more than fear itself. It's not about you. It's not about your problems, your family life, your home life, and all that. Everybody can make time. We know that. It takes five minutes out of the day sometimes just to, just to share a simple message that can have a strong impact on a person's life. It's your choice in the end that makes it. Your choices get you where you are. Okay? And that leads you to a whole new set of consequences. That, that's a whole other sermon, though, that we'll learn another time. Hopefully not too late. Can knowledge save a life? Of course it can. Of course knowledge can save a life. How do you receive that knowledge? Well, through truth. It's through accepting information that somebody did not fear giving to you. They knew that knowledge is to give. Okay? So the gifts that are given to you, this knowledge today, is meant to be paid forward. It's meant to be a message that you share with the world. Not hide or suppress because you've got other people to take care of it. Okay, because you have a destiny, you have very specific people that are in your pathway set before you. Knowledge can save a life. CPR can save a life, can bring the breath of life back to a person, just as the Word of God is a breath of life to people for your very life and your salvation. Okay, it's the same thing. So it's not meant to be suppressed, it's not meant to be withheld. We're, we're living in a time where the time is almost out. So now's the time to seek the truth, to share the truth if you already understand it. 
you already hold it within your heart and your tongue. And don't tell me you don't have that capability. You do. Every single one of you do. You spend each day spending time with other people, talking to them on the phone or on the internet, and you spend hours doing it. Just remember, it's not about us. It's not about you. It's about the Lord. It's about the Lord doing God's will, and He's guiding you to that. So, are you going to make the right choice? It's now or never. You may never get that chance again. Thank you.